hard happens, you know when you're going through a very difficult time in life and art just hits you in a certain way, whether that be singing, whether that be drama, whether that be through written or spoken word or, or even through fine arts. I tell you, there's a lady in the studio today that has done a phenomenal change in her life. Her name is Janet Lemieux. Good to see you in nice the show today. Nice to see you, honey. Pleasure having you. And I tell you, some of the art that she's done and things that she's doing in our community is phenomenal. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about you and how you arrived upon art. How I arrived upon art. Um, even being a young child when chaos was all over my life, mm. I found myself singing and singing would just carry me through the hardships and the trauma and the, the abuse and everything else. It was just music is laughter to the soul and I guess it reaches everything and everybody. You have been through quite life changes. I'd love, love to start there, I tell you. This <laughs> I is, would say. This is a picture of you. I'm going to bring it up on this camera here. Can you tell us a little about the old you? The old me. The old me was miserable, uh, had very low self-esteem, was very sick, was, as you can see, morbidly obese. And um, that's a picture of me when I weighed 254 pounds. Wow. And um, I guess that was in 2000, around 2000. And in 2002, I had a break down, which turned into a breakthrough. And I shedded 100 pounds in one year, in 2002. Wow, how did you do that? I know, right? I did that, it sounds very cliche, but it's the truth. I started to love myself. And when somebody starts to love themselves for who we are, uh, you start to make the right decisions. So by seeing myself as I was and loving everything about me, even the, the weight that was so some would say disgusting, so embarrassing, so humiliating, so it was killing me really. But I decided to see it as for what it was. It was a protection. It kept me protected from abusers, from, from society, from having to expose myself out there. And you know, when you're morbidly obese, or when even when you're overweight, you're kind of unseen in this world. People look away. They don't. They they just don't know how to address you, so they ignore you. So it was pretty safe to be morbidly obese, except that it was killing me. And one one day, I we lived on the third floor of a condo apartment building, and I was following my daughter up the stairs. And I was so out of breath. And I was young. I was 30 years old. And I thought, wow, I will never be able to see her grow old if I don't start losing this weight. And how do I do it? And I did what I do. I, I meditate. I go in. I listen to my intuition. I've always been very, very intuitive. And I've asked for answers and for miracles. And they came. At one moment in time, you weren't able to walk. Uh, yes. So it got to the point where, how, how, I don't even know, how bad was it? It was severe enough that I was issued this parking permit in 2009. It says 2012 there, but that's a long story. In 2009, I was issued this label. I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, uh, probably because after... I don't know how many dozens of tests I had gone through. They couldn't say what was wrong with me, so they labeled it fibromyalgia. And I was in the military at that time. And when you're in the military and a doctor um, prescribes you medication, you have to take the medication. It's a direct order from an officer. <laughs> So at one point in my life, I was taking, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 different types of medication just to try to feel better. But my body wouldn't 
move anymore. So I was eventually medically released because I couldn't walk uh, or barely. Um, and as soon as I got out, I was such a zombie. I didn't recognize myself. My husband didn't recognize me. And I was numb. I was really numb. I couldn't feel joy. I couldn't feel pain. I couldn't feel anger. I couldn't feel me. But I was alive, but not alive. And um, so again, I did what I had done for the wait. I went inside and listened. And through processes and meditation and prayers, um, I did the work. And today, I'm completely medication-free and pain-free. It was not fibromyalgia. It was my spirit trying to tell me something's wrong. You're not paying attention. When will you start pay to pay attention? And, um, and when I did start to pay attention and had forgotten to love myself and to listen to myself, because really, love is the answer to all, <laughs> um, I started to make the right decisions again. And here I am today. Beautiful. Thank you. And now you teach individuals how to achieve the same kind of thing. I most definitely do. I'm really proud of it because if I was able to transform my life from, you know, alcoholism, um, sexual abuse, domestic violence, being disabled, being morbidly obese, at one point in our life, me and my husband, we were on the verge, is that the word in English, of bankruptcy. We were so poor, we had to go to food banks. <laughs> and I've changed all of it in my life. And there is a point in your life where you think, why have I gone through so much struggle in my life? There must be a reason. And the answer was clear to me. I have to help others that think there's no hope. There's always hope. There's always, always hope. And when somebody tells me, Today, somebody who doesn't know all the tribulations I've been through, they say, oh, but it's easy for you. You're healthy. You have a happy marriage. You have five healthy children. Your house, your career, your, your, I can, I can honestly, genuinely look at them in the eyes to their souls and say, yes, but I've been there. I know the pain and you can change it if you want, if you choose love, because I've done it. And I still do it. There are still moments in my life where it goes down. But the difference now compared to 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago is that it doesn't last years, months, or weeks. Now it can last maybe a few hours. I'm like, wow, how am I feeling? Oh, I'm pretty angry. How do I want to feel? At peace. So what am I willing to do about it? And then do it. If we wanted to get a hold of you, we'll, I'm sure we're going to put your website at the bottom of the screen. Mm -hmm. I tell you, you're definitely the lady to contact if you're going through any struggle. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a story. <laughs> and you're also using art now, not only to help yourself continue to recover and grow, but help others to do the mm -hmm. same. Mm -hmm. We have a finished work that you have here. Yes. Could you tell me a little bit about this piece? She's called The Book of Life. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, when I paint, I follow a method, a 13-step process or steps. And whenever we start with this process, I never know what's going to be the end product. Never, ever know. And it's almost a parallel. It's not almost. It is a parallel as in, in life. When we don't know which directions to take anymore, we still have to keep moving forward. So when I start painting, I start with a blank canvas. And I don't have in mind, oh, I'm going to paint um, a landscape or I'm going to paint some trees or I'm going to paint uh, the book of life. I start with something blank 
and I allow what's inside to be expressed. So that's how she started the so book this, of life. This is the piece that we just saw. This is the piece that we just saw. And this is how it began. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And that then became this. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I need thumbs yeah. up if we can see this properly in camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With and every step of the way, it's, I don't intentionally choose what I'm going to do. I literally follow the brush strokes. I don't pick the colors. I let the colors paint, pick me. Uh, I And very often, I would say 99% of the time, I do not like what I'm doing. I'm like, what's going on? This cannot be out, you know. But that's our self-critic, which lives in all of us all the time, which I refer to as our ego. And our ego is very powerful. It doesn't want us to be happy. It doesn't want us to be free. It doesn't want us to be in touch with our divine self. But when you're able to shush your ego enough and to follow that inner guidance, which some call God, some call um, the spirit, the divine, the universe, the angels, well, this happens at the end, a masterpiece. And I am not an artist. I've never taken any classes, any art classes. And that's what I tell all of my students. You don't need to know how to paint. You need to silence the voices and the noise and the chaos in your head to listen to that one voice, which is divine, which knows it all, which is it keeps me and you and everybody else alive. We are all one and it knows it all. And this happens. Hmm. The forest fairy. Yes, same thing. It, she's not complete. She's not signed. The book of life was signed. And that's also part of the process. Sometimes I start and they don't want to be touched for a while. And I've, in time, I've came, I've came to understand that it's okay. I need to live some other experiences before it can be complete. And instead of judging myself and going, what's wrong with you? You can't complete this, blah, 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 blah. I have some compassion for myself. And again, some love to say, okay, we'll wait. And I put it on the wall and I look at her and I wait until she's ready. It's not about me. It's about the process. You teach students how to do the same. I do. And, and you, you told me earlier that it's unnerving for a lot of people to go through art in this kind of way, not knowing the end at the start. Absolutely. Yes. Um, a lot of people, their first thing they either say on the phone or in person or via email is, yeah, but I'm not an artist. I don't know how to paint and I could never do what you're doing. And I would say, well, can you finger paint? And of course, everybody can finger paint. Well, they can do the same thing. Um, the Course in Miracles says that um, nobody is special, yet everybody is in their own special way. Well, the same thing. I will produce this, but everybody is capable of doing this. And the transformation that happens on canvas is nothing compared to the transformation that happens in the person, their experience. And not, it's never happened that a student has not enjoyed the process. Through the process, it's very challenging. All this resistance, all this inner critic again, the self-esteem, the wanting to throw it all. And yet, at the end, they're like, it was transformational. I've received testimonials. I don't consider myself a miracle worker, but I've been called a miracle worker. And it's just, uh, what is a miracle? A miracle is merely a shift in perspective. So I was able to get the students soul naked. <laughs> soul naked, tell us about that term. Hmm. So um, I like to refer to myself as the, the life coach that gets people naked, soul naked that is. And that's because Mm. within us all lies perfection 
I am perfect with all my imperfections. But through life, we've learned to mislabel ourselves. Well, I'm a parent. Oh, what's a good parent? Am I too strict? Am I too lenient? Do I say I love you enough? Do I say it too much? And then, but we're also an employee or an employer. Am I a good employee? Am I a bad employee? Am I a good employee? Am I a so all the labels that we think we have to live up to, um, through these labels, we become somebody that we're really not. We forget who we are. And as I shed those labels and those misidentifications, well, we are naked with our soul. And the soul is divinely perfect. So everybody that I meet, I see the divine in them, just like in yoga. The divine in me sees the divine in you. The love in me sees the love in you. I guess it's a gift I have that I am sincerely able to see the divine in everybody because I see through all the, the labels. I don't know what to say. This is just such an amazing interview. You're such an amazing lady. That's Thanks, amazing. Damien. You, we could find you at the Tremont. Yes, at the Tremont Annex. At the Tremont Annex yes, in it's Collingwood. A Yes, we need to pr this precision yes. because a lot of people look for me in the Tremont, but it's right across the street at 79 Simcoe Street. Okay. I know we have a couple of pictures of that location. We'll yes. bring them up and show them. It's such right a now. haven. Sure. Yes, <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful space. And we have other pictures that I'd love to share okay. with the audience as well, if we can mm -hmm. look at the first one here. We, we've already put mm -hmm. this one up earlier on in the show when we're talking about um, your, your military history. It seems a lifetime away. Yes, yes, yes. That is phenomenal. <laughs> that I, is, okay, so that's not Photoshop. You are actually not. eight feet away from a buck. Oh, absolutely. I have other pictures where the buck is actually like in my hand. I'm, and you didn't feed it and, and you, you didn't, you haven't been like taming a, a buck for the last like eight years in your backyard. No. You're not doing like the move. No. Okay, okay. So you yeah. legitimately, yeah. that is fantastic. I have pictures, you know, with bears, not that close. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but with bears, with you just name the animals, they come to me. Um, some of my friends call me like the animal whisperer. I, because I see the vine in all human life. And I like to think that maybe the animals sense that for me. Huh. That's a before and after. Yes. Yeah, shed a hundred pounds. Yeah. Incredible. So naked, the forest fairy again. What's Absolutely. it like not walking with a cane? Mm. What's it like? It, hmm. I've never lost that kind of weight. Yeah. Is it is it mentally transformative as well as physically? It like, is. I, 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 please, for for mm -hmm. those of us that are struggling with weight or those of us that have never gone through this, can you give us a window into that experience? Yes, I would say the first thing to do is to look at yourself in the mirror. And I'm going to say naked. I don't mean so naked this time. I mean literally naked. And not to look away and to avoid your reflection. To literally look at yourself in the mirror. And to find that part in you that loves everything about you. Your heart is beating. You don't have to think about your heart beating for it to beat. It keeps you alive. Well, why would your heart be intelligent enough to keep you alive and everything else not? That doesn't make sense. If you're overweight, your body is protecting you for something. And until I was able to tell my body, I get it. I get it. I, ca I can protect myself now. I can say no now. I can, I'm, I'm a big girl now. Do you get this, the pun? <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's just liberating. And the other thing is I know very well that if I would have kept on going like this, I, I'm not sure I would be here today to speak to you. I think I'd be dead by now. Um, there is a history of health issues in my family. My father passed away in 2000 from multiple health conditions. and. Uh, and I'm very healthy, and our children are very healthy. I like to think that I broke not only the cycle of violence, but also the cycle of bad health, if I can say. And uh, every moment is a blessing. I am really 
grateful to be alive. It's a miracle. We have more photos. I'd love to share some of the uh, fo- <laughs> photos of your studio, which I'm sure are going to be bringing up very quickly through through this one segment because we're running quickly out of time. Yes. You have a beautiful space. I do. And, and can people come in and see your space? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And so that's here in Collingwood. And mm-hmm. also you have a really cool thing, free hugs. Can you tell me, <laughs> tell me? Yes. Um, I went through a training with Mike Dooley, uh, Infinite Possibilities, and um, a friend of mine, Havelin, she uh, she has this brilliant personality and she gives free hugs. And she inspired me to do the same. You know, a lot of people don't get any hugs at all. And hugs, it's been proven that we need hugs to survive. It's not just this woo-woo, this oh my gosh, hippie stuff, you know. It, it's been scientifically, medically proven. And uh, once in a while, I hang out here in Collingwood and I give free hugs. And at first I thought nobody else would come and hug me back, but there's lots of people that come. We are already out of runway. I yes. tell you, it's absolutely a pleasure having you on the show. It's my honor. It's my wow. blessing. Thank I you so much. I look forward to having you on again. And for those of you that are diehard and want to know even more, stay tuned after credits because we've got a little bit more to show. Art Happens is brought to you in part by the Spalding School of Music, Backland Photography, Men Trying on Lingerie, So you survived the credits and you're back for more. I tell you, we didn't have time to put you put together all the photos from the first time. So we're gonna give you a little sneak peek of the remaining bits. You guest speak, yes. right? Yes, I correct. Do. So we yes. have a picture of you speaking. Where are you speaking mm-hmm. here? In Boston. In Boston. In oh, Boston. so you're all over the map. <laughs> oh, from Canada I am. And I <laughs> yeah, I have clients all over all over the world. I have clients from Costa Rica. I have clients in Australia. I have clients all over the okay. world. Okay. Wow. And we can get a hold of you through your website. Yes. And I'm sure through all the means we can say, okay, what else we got? Ooh, that is good. <laughs> Yes, where is that? Last year, I led a retreat in the in Dominica, in the Caribbeans. Mm-hmm. And you're this year, you're leading a retreat in Costa Rica in November. Wow, when November? Okay. Yes. Okay. And ha- can I join you? How does this <laughs> yes, work? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Come along. Okay. We'll we'll jam. We'll <laughs> drum. <laughs> All right. Yes. My this is- my studio, my beautiful safe haven studio. Mm-hmm. Mm, the same thing. Yeah. With the art. It's a dream come true, literally. That's yes. that's where you are seven, situated in Collingwood. Seven, yeah, 79 Cinco Street yes. at the Tremont. All right, so if we want to find you, we know how to find you. Again, pleasure having you on the show. And I tell you, you got to contact this lady. Phenomenal <laughs> talent. Great to have you on the show. Thank you so Look much. Look forward to seeing you again. Thanks. Okay, mm. thank you.